quick announcement. I'm going to be giving away emblems and final shape copies on my stream. Link in the description. While doing Whisper Helps and gaming Onslaught with you guys. Also, subscribe, you cute mother... On April 9th, 2024, Destiny players, any player, for free, got a brand new horde mode. Whisper of the Worm craftable with changes to the exotic mission. And alongside this, there is six iconic weapons. The ability to skip the new light quest for players just hopping in to get rid of the slog it can be, character customization changes, and a free name change. This is all free, and this is all only in week one. With the Pantheon, six more weapons, Outbreak Perfected returning, and PvP maps to come. So this video should probably just end here, right? This is a resounding yes from the Destiny community. If Into the Light is worth your time, if the Destiny community is so back! I've been seeing comments like we're so back all day. I don't even think there is room for an argument that if you like Destiny at all, or liked the game in the past at all, that you shouldn't play this. Into the Light is the best content drop since the 30th anniversary that Destiny has had. It's better than almost all seasons, and carries with it such a player-friendly punch that you'd be questioning if this was the same Bungie from a few months ago, selling starter bundles and getting the whole community stirred up. On top of this, Bungie came out swinging with the final shape Vidoc, and that was totally unexpected. I think I'll keep the focus on Into the Light, but that one really did blow me away with new subclasses, new enemy races, mixing and mashing supers, and the exotic class item busting up the balance of the game even more. The final shape looks raw, but this is Into the Light. And Into the Light also got my brain asking one question, and it's not meant to be a cynical mess of a question, more of a common sense one. Why does it always take a near downfall of Destiny to present changes that are pro player? The best comment I read all day was on Bungie's final shape reveal, and it just said, God, I love a concerned Bungie. Wouldn't everyone be on the game all the time if we gave them reasons to more often? Look, nobody wants to be that guy when everyone is having fun. I have been having such a blast with Into the Light, but if we don't want meh Bungie to exist, then you have to ask these questions and actually be thinking about what you're getting and why you're getting it. Part of me wonders why the original Final Shape didn't look nearly as good as the reveal today. I'm telling you that feedback works. Being a bitch isn't the same as feedback, but feedback does work. And I think it's the reason why Into the Light and the Final Shape will be better. You raising your voice, the community upset, all of these things do have impact. I will save my overall worries and thoughts after we talk about the meat of the content and reasons why you'd want to maybe jump back in. Or you can go straight to the TLDR button and just go to this timestamp. Anyways, let's get started. So free in 2024 isn't the same as free a few years ago. When I think of worth your time, the instant response can be, well, it's free. But so are many games out there, even other massive games. So free isn't always the best argument. What does work to Bungie's favor and has for a long time is nostalgia of the older content. In Destiny 1, this was the Age of Triumph, which boosted the level chase. The older raids got updated with new difficulty, ornaments were made for all the raid armor, weapons came back with legendary and exotic versions, and more. Obviously, Age of Triumph was like the ribbon on Destiny 1. But Destiny 2 has been around way longer and had the issue of sunsetting. So instead of just upping all the raids in the game, Bungie kind of made a charcuterie board of activities to do. With Into the Light, you can change your character's look for the first time ever. And I do recommend making your character female because the armor just sits way better. You will also be able to skip Into the Light and get rank up packages as you can just hop into the new content skipping the need to have to grind to play it. I think Bungie's goal with this was to treat Into the Light as a reset for everyone, while still keeping reasons for players who haven't ever left to have something to do. I mean, they've said that this was their goal all along. The reason I say that there's some stuff for new and old players is because the loot will be hit or miss depending on who you ask. 
some loot is best in slot or damn near close to it while others made me scratch my head. Weapons that I got to play with early, like Recluse and Edge, yes, I'm serious, Edge Transit are amazing and will be well worth everyone's time to grind. But then there's weapons like the Stranger's Rifle and Hung Jury that are just in service of new players or someone who hasn't played Destiny in years. Not to say that if you like Scouts or Pulses, you'll have a bad time, but Hung Jury is very much in the game and the Stranger's Rifle is just... Well, Blast Furnace comes soon. If you've only recently put Destiny down and are fed up with Bungie as a whole, I don't know if this loot is for you, especially if you only started playing recently, because a lot of the loot is carried by nostalgia, for better or worse. The only thing I can say is that the loot has depth to it that I wasn't expecting. You can focus a specific weapon to drop more often in the activities after finishing its mini grind quest along with the fact that these aren't craftable to my knowledge. So getting a drop finally has come back to being rewarding, as the god roll may not come, but neither does the surface level grind that Destiny has with crafting, so readily available that it turns the game into a checklist. The main depth for a new player is that you can get a roll and you can keep farming until you get the drop that you want. The main depth for a hardcore player is that once you get that roll of what you want, you can chase the shiny Pokemon variant. For a very rare chance, you can get a special ornament on the weapons with random rolls being curated. So getting the 5 out of 5 with this shader will be for the most hardcore players. Speaking of shaders, Super Black, the most requested shader in Destiny history since its debut in Dead Orbit in 2015, is now able to be acquired after ranking up the entire new social space. It will take till May, but I think it'll be worth it. The Hall of Heroes is the new social space, and it's really punching the nostalgia bag in the right ways. You're inside the Outbreak mission, where you worked on the Catalyst. You're able to grab Grimoire off the walls. There's secrets that I really won't spoil. There's a lot of references to Destiny events and holiday ones alike. I really felt that there was a huge missed opportunity for a firing range like the Tribute Hall had, as Destiny has way too many variables to not have a proper testing ground. The perks on the weapons from the social space mostly feel safe here. There's a new one called Desperate Measures, and while it can be strong with a 30% damage buff, it takes a lot to get there versus Frenzy, where you can just kind of be in combat and get more benefits. It's fun, I just don't see it being as applicable as I would have hoped. I was also hoping for some more new perks but I think this is still a solid lineup of perks that players had already liked. We need to see how everyone feels when all is said and done, but I think this was a pretty solid area with the loot. The next big piece of content is, well, where you're gonna grind all of that loot, and that is called Onslaught. Onslaught is a 50 round tower defense mode, where every 10 rounds you face a boss in a pyramid ship portal increasing the difficulty as you go. Onslaught is to service your god roll grind, but more importantly, it's one of the only true new things added with Into the Light. A lot of the others are fan service that pull from the past, but Onslaught leaves room to build in the future. Other than the server bugs and not getting loot drops every time because, you know, day one bugs happen, I really loved Onslaught. I wasn't expecting Shax to be the level 3 decoy, nor was I expecting some of the difficulty spikes even on normal. But Onslaught, yeah, it had my attention. I do wish there was more secrets to be found, and hey, maybe there is some to find. But I loved how many maps came with this mode. Seriously, getting all three maps made the farming really fun, because I just haven't gotten bored. And they're not on a weekly rotator. The loot, when it is working, is so rewarding to drop. There's no red borders, just good rolls with high chances to get whatever you have attuned. And on Legend, you can get double the drops. 20 chests is obtainable. The bonus objectives do feel a little safe, but on Legend... Oh boy, on Legend. As far as other activities, we have the Return of the Whisper. And of course, I want to make a video on both Whisper and Outbreak's return. But for those unaware, both of these missions were Sunset, and now Whisper is back with Zero Hour to Come. My impression on the new Whisper are that it was a lot easier this time around. And yes, I know the path and we have ways to skate around the arenas a lot easier, but the power creep we have in Destiny really is showing. I was breezing through the platforming, but the enemies used to be so much scarier. We are gods now! 
The only real changes were sitting in the back of the final arena, so you can't just chill. And the bosses you can now fight in an order instead of having to fight all three at once. Finally, there was an ogre after it all. It was overall about what I expected, but the Whisperer has some new oracles for fun rewards. I've been seeing some mixed reports, but I got all four white nail perks in a single run? There's also only two oracles for now, and I really didn't like this. I don't understand why we brought back a secret mission just to put it on a time gate. It feels weird especially knowing that Onslaught is not on a time gate, and some other weapons are also not on a time gate. I get that Bungie wanted people to experience Whisper every single week and have a reason to go back, but I felt like this mission could have benefited by just some other chances to get the loot that I was already grinding in Onslaught. Big missed opportunity here. As far as the new perk for Whisper, the best is the first perk in my opinion. Field prep adding max ammo and faster reloading when crouching. Yeah, Whisper is pretty dang strong for sustained damage, and I swap to it often when killing bosses in Onslaught. Wait for a proper sniper buff and a small Whisper buff, and it will be outstanding again. I won't talk about Pantheon or PvP for now, but PvP, I didn't see any new rewards listed, which is also very disappointing in my opinion. Yes, we have all these great weapons, but why are we bringing PvP maps without at least one thing to chase? Unless I'm wrong and there is something else there, I don't know man, this just didn't feel right. Now, here is my overall conclusion with Into the Light, and it's grounded on hindsight and a little bit of cynicism. Look, you are not wrong or a bad person for wanting to play Into the Light. In fact, your time is what's measured in a free experience, and Into the Light seems to value players' time for the first time in a long time. I fell in love with the depth of what Destiny used to offer, in its many secrets, its puzzles, its endgame challenge, its players to figure it out. With Into the Light, I can feel that magic coming back. With the final shape, I can feel that magic coming again the way Forsaken was made. But again, we need to see more. I think that the delay for the final shape was to add a lot of stuff regarding feedback. This all feels like something new. But I have to say, why did it take this long for Bungie to finally make something very pro player? Is Into the Light the sign of what's to come? Probably for the near future. But you have to wonder when that switch will come back. Look, it's not like it's something new. Bungie has made some banger content. And then all of a sudden, that switch comes back where it's very anti-player. Recently, Astacross made a video that I felt plucked exactly what my brain was feeling, and that was the fear of over-delivery happening. I've always said that the final shape will be a solid experience, but it's not June or July. It's not even August through November that I'm worried about. It is December, and when Bungie decides they have people back, and now it's time for the bad business to come back. I don't dislike everything Bungie does. I think they're doing a lot to rectify mistakes at the moment, but the player base has seen the face of top level greed many times, and I wouldn't blame them for moving away from the game whether I like it or you like it or not. If you're someone who sees this as a potential reason to rally your friends and hop on, then this will be for you. But if you viewed this free update as nostalgia bait and a lame excuse to try to break glass in case of emergency from Bungie, basically the panic button, you probably shouldn't play the update. For me and my overall thoughts, it's simple. I know that a carrot is being placed in front of my face, and I know that Bungie clearly saw the number of players not in the game and pre-order sales way down and yada yada yada, the end is coming, and they hit the panic button, and back against the wall Bungie came out. I am aware of that, but I also like playing Destiny, and I just want reasons to play the game more often. You can like Bungie the devs, I do, and the people that work on the game, I do, and the product of the game, I do, and still dislike Bungie the business. It's okay, they're a billion dollar company, the business is not there to be your friend. I like my friends, and I like making videos talking about Destiny, so I will be playing Into the Light knowing the reasons it was made. I think that if this took them six months to create, and there's this much depth of loot, if they know how to get people back, why don't they do this more often? Becomes my number one question. Anything else you want to talk about with Into the Light, 
stay subscribed, and there's more on the way. I'll talk to you guys soon.